Hello friends, this video on diversity in living world part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's look at the next level that is ordered. So again, these are nothing but group of related families which have few similar characters. So now the similarities are gradually decreasing. So these are again families which are related to each other, which will have some few similar characters. So families in an order are more closely related to each other than to families in any other order. Again, the same concept. So let us look at an example to understand this. We will follow the same example so that it becomes easier for you to compare and understand. So these three, they all belong to the same genus. When you compare a cat, they all belong to the same family. Now if you compare it with a dog, now, appearance-wise or look-wise, there is no similarity that you see between a dog and a tiger or a dog or a cat. But if you consider the food habit, you see that all of them share a similar food habit. All of them are carnivorous animals. That means they all feed on flesh. They all eat flesh. So that is how we can even classify dogs with them. So we say that they are of the same order. So, and what is that order? That order is carnivora. So, they all belong to carnivora. Dog, cat, leopard, tiger and lion. But when you talk about their families, they are different. When you talk about the family of a dog, dog belongs to a family called Calcidae. When you talk about the family of a cat or a leopard or a tiger or a lion, they all belong to the family Felidae, right? So if you talk about the genus, the genus for dog is again, it is, um, so when you talk about the genus for a dog, it is again different because it is Canis. For um, a cat, it is Felis. And for all these three, it is same, that is Panthera. So are you getting it now that gradually you will see that all these animals share some or the other similarities. But as you keep grouping them and as you move up in the taxonomical hierarchy, their similarities will keep on decreasing. So in a similar fashion, let us look at the other categories as well. So let us look at class. So class is again nothing but group of related orders which have still fewer characters. So again, let me take a similar kind of example. So when we considered lion, tiger and leopard, they all belonged to different species, but same genus. When I included cat, it belonged to different genus, but they all belong to the same family. When I included dog, since they all eat flesh, so they all belong to the same order. So now if I start comparing with organisms like monkey or human beings or even elephant, we see that there are certain things which are still common to all of them and that is that they are all mammals, right? They all give birth to their young ones. So we can say that the class is mammalia and each of these organisms belong to the same class. So even though now the organisms which we have considered, for example, elephant, Elephant belongs to a different order. Similarly, human beings belongs to a different order. Monkeys, again, they also go for a different order. So their order and families, genus, species, everything is different, but they all fall under the cat category of mammalia. So now if you compare a tiger with a human being, do you think that there are a lot of similarities? No, but they have got one basic similarity that both of them are capable of giving birth to their young ones. And that is why they both fall under the same class that is mammalia. Right? So here also we can say that orders in one class are more closely related to each other than to orders in a different class. So if you compare the mammals with some other organisms, you will feel that the mammals share more common characteristics. Right? Okay. Let us now talk about phylum. So again on a similar way, group of related classes with some common features like presence of notochord, dorsal hollow neural system. So now you see the kind of similarities we are looking about. It is just that 
they have everybody has a notochord doesn't matter notochord means you can call it as a vertebral column now it doesn't matter how that organism look like where it lives what are its food habits nothing else matters it is just the presence of notochord or the kind of neural system that the organism has if they share the same kind of notochord if they all have a notochord and they have a similar type of neural system they all fall under the same phylum now this word phylum is used only for animals we do not use the term phylum for plants for plants we use a different term called division so when i talk about phylum again we see we will consider the same example again but now along with these organisms we can include other organisms like fishes the reptiles like lizards or the amphibians or the snakes so they can also be included now because even though all of them doesn't fall under the class mammalia but they all fall under the same phylum okay so that is all about phylum now in a similar fashion we have a different term for plants that is called division so phylum and division they mean the same thing just that phylum is used for animals and division is used for plants so group of related classes of plants with some common features for example here we are considering a rose and a mango and they are two different plants they are of different species so if you look at their scientific naming now when we nom when we were talking about the binomial nomenclature that was only these two terms so what will be the binomial name for a rose it will be rosa gallica the genus and the species but if you want to know the entire history or the entire scientific classification of a rose this is how you will like write it the kingdom it belongs to the division it belongs to the class it belongs to order family genus and species so this is the complete uh, scientific classification of a rose so if you compare the scientific classification of a rose with a mango what do you see both of them belong to the same kingdom if you compare the division you can see that this belongs to the division angiospermae that is the flowering plants and this belongs to the division magnoliophyta so well magnoliophyta and angiospermae they both refer to the flowering plants it is just two different terminologies so then again you can see if you look at their species genus family order they are all different so they are they do not share much similarities with each other but just that they belong to the same division because both are flowering plants so that is how we make use of division in case of plants so now we will talk about the highest level of uh, the hierarchy that is kingdom so it is the highest category of classification now broadly in the older system of uh, classification uh, scientists used to say that they are there are broadly two kingdoms in the entire variety of living organisms that is plant kingdom and the animal kingdom so plant kingdom was known as plantae and the animal kingdom was known as animalia so plant kingdom included all plants from various divisions so now inside the division you will have the classes orders family genus and species so similarly the animalia included all animals however in our next lesson when we actually talk about biological classification that how the organisms have been actually classified we will see that it is not that the entire variety or diversity of organisms have been divided into two kingdoms rather it is a five kingdom classification which had actually taken place well we will talk about that in our next lesson so for now you should just understand that kingdom is the highest level and so it it will just broadly classify things so for example plantae is one kingdom so inside plantae you will have so many different varieties of plants sometimes you will even feel that they do not have any similarity at all but still since they are all plants therefore they are all in the same kingdom similarly in animals if you look at the variety of animals a rabbit and a cockroach do you think there is any similarity you don't but still they are all under the same kingdom so now these days it is seen that the taxonomists have even started including sub categories i mean only these seven categories are not enough to accommodate so many variety of living organisms so they have even started including sub categories for more effective classification 
because the variety of organisms is increasing day by day. For example, now they also have something called subspecies. That means till now it was just species. Now they also have something called subspecies. So, okay. So overall on our discussion, after our discussion on the taxonomic categories, we conclude that as we go up, as we go higher in the taxonomic hierarchy, the similarities between the organisms keep decreasing. So please make sure that you understand these taxonomic categories because they are very, very important. Because when we go towards the next lesson, we will be very often using the binomial nomenclature of different organisms. So now that we have got an idea about the various taxonomic categories, let us look at the scientific classification of some of the organisms, some of the organisms which are very common to us. For example, first let us talk about ourselves, the human beings. Binomial name is Homo sapiens. See here, the binomial names are all written in italics. You remember the rules for nomenclature? So the genus is Homo, family is Hominidae, order is Primata, class is Mammalia, Phylum is chordata and kingdom is animalia. So here you can see all these human beings, dog, cat, lion, housefly, they all fall under the same kingdom that is animalia. Whereas rose, wheat, mango, they all fall under the, uh, under the kingdom plantae. So now, I mean, I'm sure that I do not need to explain each of these to you. Now you can go through these yourselves and you can try to understand that how they have been put into the same family or why they have been put into the same class or same order. So I hope that this topic on taxonomy was uh, helpful to you and you have actually understood the concepts, right? Because that is very, very important. So our next topic would be taxonomical aids. So there we will see that how do we give such binomic, binomial names? I mean, how exactly or how exactly it is done in real life? I mean, it, it is very easy to say things theoretically that, okay, we have this, 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 this categories. So whenever you find a new organism, just put it into one of these categories. But how do we actually do that? So that is how, what we will see in taxonomical aids. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.